Control. Breach in five, four, three. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm Uncle Freedom, coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And in the vein of the videos we've been releasing recently, where we've gone back to that prepper, bug-out bag mentality, we're going to continue that today with Bug-Out Bag Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 3. So if that sounds fun and interesting to you, go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend the channel is growing. It's awesome. If you need to get in touch with me, I am at Uncle Freedom 213 on Instagram or Facebook. Or you can shoot me an email at unclefreedom213 at outlook.com. I try to get back to everybody there and help people out as much as I can. So don't hesitate. If you haven't checked them out before, we have Bug Out Bag Uncomfortable Truths Volume 1 and 2. And then we have Prepping Uncomfortable Truths Volume 1, 2, 3, and maybe before or after this one, Volume 4. So check those out. I also have playlists for a lot of this stuff up. So hit them up. See what you got going on. Also, something to keep in mind, guys, is on my Facebook or Instagram, I have a Linktree account that will take you to affiliates of the channel, people like Dark Angel Medical, Coltac, Tyrant CNC, CNH Precision, Gun Mag Warehouse, uh, Warren Tactical, any little bit that you were going to do anyway. If you use those links, it helps the channel out, and I appreciate it. So, Bug Out Bags, Uncomfortable Truths, Volume 3. Let's do this. One, you have absolutely overestimated your abilities. We all want to believe that if the balloon went up, we would be okay. That we could do more than we've ever done before because the situation would dictate it. But that is not how the real world works. You have overestimated what you can do. If you have never walked more than 10 miles in your life, you are not suddenly going to put on 100 pounds worth of stuff and walk 80 miles to a location. If you have never successfully completed any land nav using a map and protractor and shooting a bearing, an azimuth, any of that, you are not going to get good at it simply because you don't have a different choice. That's how you die. It's a really dumb way to die. You're never, like, you, you've you overestimated. Be very honest with yourself in these situations. There's no bravado, no machismo when it comes to this stuff. I don't know if physically I have the capability to walk this far. So I'm going to work on that simple thing because I know I need the ability to walk that far. Number two, you are not carrying all that stuff. I know you think you are, and I know you think it's all super necessary. But you don't need all that shit, and you're not carrying all that. It's just not going to happen, right? Like That's not how this works. We would all love to put a 190-pound ruck on. And as a guy who's carried around 160, 180-pound rucks in his life, it sucks, man. You're not going to take all this stuff. It's, 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 I don't care if you believe me or not, but I'm, I'm just telling you, you're not going to because it's going to hurt. And you're going to be like, day one, you're going to be like, man, do I really need this? And you're going to start losing gear, right? That's You're not carrying it all. So build your stuff out with a purpose. For the distance, terrain, your route planning, your pace plan for how you, that's how you need to be packing. If it doesn't fit into the mold, you probably don't need it. You're not carrying all that stuff. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Hate to break it to you. Number three, never, ever underestimate the power of having a few comfort items in your bag. A book, candy, a pillow. An inflatable pillow. Don't 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 take your big giant like down pillow. Um, when you are miserable, this stuff goes a really long way. And I'll give you an anecdotal story to this. So back in the day, I was stationed in Alaska. There is a season in Alaska known as breakup. Being from Alabama, I know all about rain and I know about mosquitoes because I'm from Alabama. Our mosquitoes would get killed in a battle of the mosquitoes by the Alaskan mosquitoes. I thought those were mosquito hawks. No, they're just prehistoric sized mosquitoes. So on this field X, five days into it, it had literally been raining. And if you've never been in Alaska during breakup rain, uh, we call it breakup because that's when the rivers start breaking up, the ice starts clearing, snow's melting off, everything is wet. 
but the rain in Alaska, it's not like raining hard, but if you touch anything, it just like dumps water on you. It, it's just like, it's like, oh, I'm good. <sighs> right? Like that's how it happens. I was literally wet from day one. I was sleeping in a reconnaissance position that was basically a ranger grave. For those of you that don't know what a ranger grave is, we dig dirt out, put it up, and then we are like surrounding the hole with that, and that's how we live. My ranger grave was full of about three inches of water. I slept in three inches of water for days. I was chewed up by mosquitoes. Like you would, you would wake up and like see them like just desperately trying to get through your mosquito net at your face. I was so miserable. And like, I don't like, there's a level of miserable that, that very few people understand, but most infantry people, reconnaissance people, they, they get this. There's like a, a line that gets drawn where you are so miserable in the field that death is preferable to what you're doing. We got lucky and changed positions because we were extending and we ended up in a mounts village that we weren't going to use, but it was for a different part of what we were doing. And we were able to dry out. And I will tell you, there was no greater feeling on planet earth than putting on dry poly pro underwear, dry socks and Gore-Tex pants. Oh my God. Like sex had nothing on that. So never underestimate the value of a comfort item, a book to pass the time. Never underestimate it. You will need it. Don't have a library in your stuff, but having a book or two that you like, man, it can change your whole outlook on the world. Never underestimate it. Number four, you will never cover distance as fast as you think. It is not going to happen. I know I walk four miles an hour. I can do this. You're not going to do it day after day. It's never going to happen. You can almost, as a rule, deduct 30% off of what you think you can cover. Maybe you can cover 12 miles a day flat on a ground. But now let me ask you to do that through undergrowth and forest and hills and around water and through wet stuff and varying terrain because you're not going to walk on the street if you're smart if you're if you're an idiot if you're planning on i'm going to walk on the highway the whole way there you're dumb don't do that you're never going to cover as much distance as you think it's not going to happen if you're if you are living 65 miles away as the crow flies from where you live and you know that walking on the roads it's 115 miles how long is that now with you walking over varying terrain, undergrowth, over hills, staying off of main roadways and having to figure out your own thing, like when you can claw uh, cross like an LDA, sorry, linear danger area, for those of you that don't know what the hell I'm talking about, like a roadway or a having to use a bridge or something like that. You have to be ready for those. You're not going to cover as much distance as you think, so plan accordingly. Again, pace. Number five. Be 100% prepared to stop movement and do recon. Hasty recon, not like a long drawn out thing. That means that you need to have your dedicated reconnaissance equipment, whether that is a monocular, binoculars, your LPVO on your rifle, um, sniper shawl, a boonie hat with scrim on top of it, something, your pruning shears, stuff that you could need to build a hasty veg fan or something like that. You need to have that because you don't want to just be walking, coming up over a ridge line, and all of a sudden you've silhouetted yourself to a war posse sitting down there at the bottom of the hill. Ne be ready to stop, ditch your stuff for a second, get your recon gear out, and do a little recon of an area ahead of you to make sure your route is clear. Number six, no matter how good you are and stealthy you are, or great at general direction you are, you will at some point get lost or zone out while you're walking and miss something of, of importance. It's going to happen. It happens to everybody. I don't know. How, like Everybody's driven home from work, realize that they were home, but they can't remember the drive. It's because you're on autopilot. It happens to everybody. And in a situation where you're bugging out, you are on a water deficiency. So hydration deficiency you're on a caloric deficiency. Don't lie to yourself. You're not going to make that lifeboat food last for three days. It's not going to happen because you're burning calories. So you're calorically deficient. You're sleep deprived. You're water deficient. You're uncomfortable. You have aches, pains, all kinds of problems you haven't had before. You are going to zone out and you will miss something. You have to be careful with that, though, because missing stuff is how you die. 
or getting lost is almost a surefire death sentence. If not for the extra time, because at the very minimum, you have to make extra time up to get back to where you're going. Number seven, you have to avoid any and all confrontation. Getting into a fight is almost a surefire way to die. Maybe you win the fight, but you made a whole crap load of noise and now everybody knows where you are. The person you got into a fight with, do they have friends? What about their assets you don't know about? If you get wounded, it's a flesh wound. You don't have a doctor. You're also not going to walk 40 more miles with a hole in your thigh. Like, yeah, there are millions of stories of people surviving overwhelming odds to get to a different point to be rescued, but there is no rescue. You are rescuing yourself because you bugged out. Getting into a conf confrontation of any kind is just a death sentence. Maybe they bust you in the nose. You don't even, it's not even bad. You just get into a fist fight and they bust your nose. And now you can't breathe out of your nose properly, which is going to affect your, your air intake, which is going to make you fatigued quicker, making it take longer to get where you're going, giving you more opportunities to die. Don't get in fights. Avoid them like the plague. Number eight, you are more than likely going to be seen on your journey at some point, And you're going to have to come up with a plan or already have a plan if you're smart to deal with it. Unless you have like a bitchin' ass invisibility cloak, the odds of you making your trek unnoticed are almost non-existent. Yes, I know, you're moving through a rural area that's never had anybody on the road. Well, guess what? Nobody's got anywhere else to go now, so people are all walking looking for new things. Guess who you're going to run into? Those people walking and looking for new things. But if you were smart and tactically sound and stealthy with your walk, like I told you to be in the first two videos... Your odds of being able to at least minimize detection are greatly improved. But odds are you're going to have to deal with it. So have a plan. Number nine. You need to be prepared. This goes back to eight, but it's so important I have to do it twice. To come into contact with other communities or groups of people. Understand that you may have to, if you're doing your light recce, right? Like you're going and checking over this ridgeline. You may have to go back, cash your bag, and I hope to God you remembered your concealed carry stuff because walking in with the exposed rifle is a really good way to get got by a dude that's super edgy right now because they just got attacked like two days ago and you don't know about it. You need to be ready to stash your pistol in a concealed carry holster, walk up looking like you are not a threat, that's a big one, and take the temperature of the situation. They may be bad guys. They may try to hurt you. Well, at least you know. And But more importantly, they may be able to tell you of something going on in that area that they've just dealt with or heard about that could help you to avoid a, a potentially deadly problem further down the road. If you come off as not a threat, not a warmongering like superhero berserker, and just a guy trying to get from point A to point B, and you don't look like you have anything, which is why it's important to cast your stuff before you walk down there. You need to go down there and take the temperature of that, see what information, intelligence that you can gain, and then once you've cleared it, walk away calmly, but once you clear line of sight, boogie to your stuff and get out of there because you don't want them to suddenly realize they want to talk to you more and you're stuck. So be ready to go. Number 10. You must always be looking, and this goes back to your autopilot problem, you must always be looking for and identifying your next or last point of concealment and hard cover. For those of you that don't understand what these are, concealment hides you, cover stops bullets. Because if you are just walking and you pop around the corner and all of a sudden there's people guarding a watering hole, you didn't hear them because you were kind of zoned out. If you have no idea where to go, like right then, you are probably not going to live through that encounter. You need to identify those things as you're walking and always be moving to it. Cops do this. Military is pretty famous for doing it. We always identify our last or next point, available point of cover that stops bullets and concealment where we can at least get out of it. So on to four bonus points for the day. But first, I'm going to give you an acronym like I gave you an acronym last time, and that was PACE. This time, I'm going to give you one that you should know, and it is SEALS. S-L-L-S. -L -L Stop, look, listen, smell. I employ this when I hunt. You employ it in reconnaissance all the time. It will literally keep you from self-removing yourself from the gene pool. Because if you had just taken a moment and stopped, 
looked around for things that were out of place, listened to what you heard. Maybe you heard the people talking at the watering hole above the ridgeline before your dumb ass cleared it and walked right into them. Smell. Again, we've talked about smell in the prepping videos. Smell travels. If somebody's cooking food or a campfire, you can pick those things up and you know to be cautious. Don't go on autopilot. Never be afraid to stop and do seals. Figure out what's going on. Bonus point number one. Remember that you are walking through someone else's territory between A and B. And they know it better than you. The routes, the watering holes, the fertile hunting ground where there could be food, not be food, passable places, not passable places. So they are going to already know where a threat would be coming from or where they would be trying to go to. And it's on you to employ reconnaissance techniques as you move and stealth in order to try to avoid or foil their attempts to box people in. It's not your backyard, man. You're playing in their backyard, and I assure you they know it better than you. Ask any veteran from Afghanistan. Those dudes ran up mountains in man jams and flip-flops and never had an extra magazine but never ran out of bullets and disappeared like a ghost. Okay? You don't know the territory they do. Bonus point number two. Little stuff is going to be what takes you out on a bug-out plan, right? Um, like little bitty stuff. Because there's an old saying that says it's not the desert that kills the warrior. It's the single grain of sand in the shoe. Having shoe goo, an extra pair of boot laces, um, and that extra pair of dry socks. I will tell you, if you don't mind carrying like five extra ounces and you have enough room, put another pair of socks because they'll never be a bad thing. Socks are your friend. Having Not having that little stuff will take you out. If you have 12 miles left to go and you bust your boot lace on your, your badass boots, but you don't have a solution to that, and most boots, that's not a problem. But if you wear Solomons with like the Kevlar speed laces, it's a problem because if you don't have something that'll fit through those things, you're not lacing those boots back up. Have an option. Don't get taken out by little bitty things. Number, bonus point number three, you have got to stop and take care of your feet. It is non-negotiable. It is a time suck. And I know you're not going to want to at some point because every infantryman has been in the same boat. But I will tell you that nothing will absolutely wreck your life and shut you down faster than your feet getting jacked up. Especially if you're walking somewhere. You've got to take time. Stop. Take a minute. Dust your feet with powder. Check them out. If you've got a hot spot, address it immediately. Don't wait five miles up the road. If you can stop safely, stop. Address the hot spots on your feet. Adjust the laces. Change your socks. Foot powder. Hang the socks on your pack so they dry out. Do not neglect those signs or you will be dead sitting somewhere with all your gear because your feet quit. And bonus point number four, nobody, and I, I leave you with this because I want you to think about it, nobody, and I mean nobody, says that your secure hidden bug out location will be hidden, secure, or unoccupied when you finally get to it. So here you come over the hill, tired, sleep deprived, food deprived, mildly dehydrated, busted ass feet, and there's smoke coming from your chimney of your secured, hidden, bug out location. What do you do then? So guys, I am Uncle Freedom. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, like, subscribe, tell a friend. If you need to find me, Facebook, Instagram, Uncle Freedom 213, Uncle Freedom 213 at Outlook.com for an email. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Stay tuned. Lots more good stuff to come. So take care of yourself. Take care of each other. I'll see you next time.